In this section, we will be graphing trigonometric functions. So we'll start off with the sine and the cosine. So um, you've seen this before, but um, we'll talk about it um, a little bit in depth here. So uh, this A in both cases is what we call the amplitude. Okay, so that's basically how large this wave is. Okay, so if I were to look at the sine curve, the sine curve basically looks like this. So if I break everything up to zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then two pi, we know that the amplitude should be up to one. So it starts at zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So this is basically how the graph looks like. So it completes one fourth full cycle, which is called the period, from zero to two pi. And notice that this graph is gonna keep going. It doesn't stop there, it just keeps going. But typically one cycle is what we're gonna be looking at in this, in this, um, in this section. So uh, notice the amplitude is just the height of this wave from the midline. So this is just the amplitude. Here the amplitude will be A. So if I multiply by two, then the amplitude will be up to two, so you will stretch it, okay? For the cosine, it's exactly the same thing. However, it's shifted over pi over two units. So zero pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then two pi. So this is one, this is negative one. Okay, the cosine starts at one, then it goes zero, negative one, zero, and then one. So this is how the graph kind of looks like. All right, so it looks just like this. All right, so it's just shifted over pi over two units. So this is just the graph of the cosine curve. Still, the amplitude is still equal to one. The next thing that you can look at is, let's start with D, start at the end. This is what we call the vertical shift. So this tells you how much am I shifting this guy up by. So if it's, uh, if it's up by one, then everything is gonna move up one unit. If it's negative, that means it's gonna be going down a unit. Okay, so it really just depends on what the sign of these numbers are. If it's positive, it goes up. So if it's positive, it goes up. If it's a negative, it's gonna go down. And what I'm talking about is the D value. So positive D, it goes up. If it's a negative D, it goes down. The tricky part is this guy, the BX plus C, which is basically the phase shift. Um, now, I don't know how your former trick teachers have done it. I'm gonna show you guys a way that I like to use, and that's basically looking at from zero to X to two pi. Because this is the interval, this guy is where it starts, and this is where it ends. So all you really need to know is how the waves look like. So remember that f of x is equal to sine of x here, and then f of x equals cosine of x here, okay? So that's basically what the graphs kind of look like. Um, it's a function, clearly. It's not one-to-one, -one, so the inverses, you have to restrict the domain, and we'll talk about inverses later. Um, notice here that the domain for both of them are all real numbers. It's from negative infinity to positive infinity for both of these guys. Negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range is going to be between negative one to one. Range, negative one to one. Okay, obviously the range is gonna change if there's a shift. Okay, so the, but the domain is always gonna be all real numbers. So what I was talking about the phase shift was that uh, this is what I like to use when doing phase shifts. Um, this basically tells you where your new starting point is and where your ending point is going to be, and then we're going to figure out the midpoints. So we're going to start off with the problem. Uh, we'll start off with the medium one, and then we'll I'll show you how to graph these guys and how to find the domain and range. So we're going to start off graph and find the domain and range of these functions, okay? So we're gonna start off with f of x is equal to three sine of two x. Um, let's just start off like that. So uh, we know what the sine curve looks like, okay? 
the sine curve looks like this. Okay, so 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, those are the quadrantal angles. Okay, so now what you want to be able to do is try to figure out, okay, so something's going on. So the first thing, I like starting with the inside out. Notice that in the inside you had a 2x. So this 2x right there is going to be um, affected. It's not going to be from 0 to 2 pi anymore. So what I like to do is that in the beginning, the sine curve is nice from 0 to 2 pi. However, you put a 2 in the inside, so now all of my x's are all messed up. So I'm going to put the 2 in there, the 2x. So 0 less than or equal to 2x 2 pi. So I'm putting this guy inside of the x. Now we need to solve for the new x. So where exactly are the intervals? So it's from 0 all the way to pi, because all I just did was divide by 2. So I have from 0 to pi. That's where it's going to complete one full cycle. So this guy is going to complete one full cycle from 0 all the way to pi. Okay, so it actually shortens it. Okay, it's a little faster. And now all we got to do is figure out what my midpoints are. So notice in the beginning, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Right now we have 2, so we need to figure out the other 3 in the middle. So the way that I like to do it is finding the midpoint. So we have 0 and pi, so we're going to take the 0 and pi, add it, and divide it by 2. That's going to give me pi over 2. So that guy is going to be the midpoint between those two points. So now we're going to look at 0 and pi over 2 and figure out what that midpoint is. So 0 plus pi over 2 divided by 2, that's going to give me pi over 4. So this guy is going to give me pi over 4. Okay, and then finally we're going to find the midpoint between pi over 2 and pi. So pi over 2 plus pi divided by 2, it's going to give me pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 over 2. That gives me 3 pi divided by, uh, what is this going to be, 4. So this is going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so my wave is going to look like this, kind of, because I haven't, I'm not done yet. So the sine curve, so it starts at 0, and 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. So this sine curve looks exactly the same as before, but now my x values are completely different. Okay, now I'm not done yet because we all we just did, all that work was just for the inside. Now i got to take care of this 3. So what am I going to do? So now everything uh, of the amplitude is now 3 times as large. So it's basically the same thing that we were doing as a stretch. Instead of 1, all the y values are going to be multiplied by 3. So it's no longer at 1, it's going to be now at 3. This guy's no longer at negative 1, it's going to be down at negative 3. So these points are the same. Okay, and then we're just going to trace them out 0, then 3, 0, negative 3, 0. So this is going to be the sine curve shifted. Okay, so as long as you give me all of these points, so I want all of these points on the x values, the x axis, and all of the y values. Okay, now what is the domain in this case? Well, the domain doesn't change, it's still negative infinity to positive infinity. We're just graphing one cycle, this continues on. And what would the range be in this case? Well, the range, the lowest y value that this can be is negative 3. The highest value is 3. So it's going to be between negative 3 to 3. That's going to be the domain of the range. Okay. All right, so now let's do another one. So let's say we had f of x is equal to negative 4 cosine of uh, 2 pi x plus pi over 2. Okay. So how would this work? So the first thing that I like to do is work with the inside part. Now many of you guys have probably learned the phase shift. That's fine. I find this a little easier to, to, to do. Okay. So I know that one cycle for the cosine or one period is from 0 to 2 pi. Um, now what I'm going to do is that this is a lot of stuff. So it's, you're seeing that you're shifting everything by pi over 2 and condensing everything by 2 pi. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in there. 2 pi x plus pi over 2 in the inside. And then on the outside is 0 and 2 pi. 
So basically, the reason why I do this is because it does everything for me. First, I'm going to shift pi over 2 units. Okay, so shift pi over 2 units. Okay, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to do it for every single side. Okay, so notice that it basically does the work for me. So at 0, I shifted over pi over 2 units to the, to the left, and now I'm at negative pi over 2. Then I'm left with a 2 pi x. And then I'm left here, so now this, you can just put it in your calculator if you like. 2 pi minus pi over 2, that's going to give me 3 pi over 2. So you can see that I'm just working with the endpoints. So the 0 went over to negative pi over 2, and the 2 pi went over to 3 pi over 2. Okay, and notice that whenever you have something in the x-axis, everything is divided. Okay, so I'm dividing now by 2 pi. Okay, so I'm basically doing everything that I've learned from the graph transformations, but in an inequality. So this guy, uh, what is this going to give me? Negative one-fourth, because the pi's are going to cancel out. This guy's going to give me three-fourths. So you can see now that the starting point of the cosine curve is going to be at negative one-fourth, and the ending point is going to be at three-fourths. Okay, so I don't like drawing the y-axis yet. I just like drawing the x-axis to kind of give me a glimpse of it. So here's negative one-fourth, and here's going to be three-fourths. And here is where you find your midpoints. So first let's find the midpoint between negative one-fourth and three-fourths. I'm going to have negative one-fourth plus three-fourths divided by two. And here what you can do is you can use your calculator if you want. So you're going to get negative four over four divided by two. That gives me negative one-half. So in the middle, you're going to get uh, oops, wait a minute, that's going to be, that's wrong, that's very wrong. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be 2 over 4 divided by 2, okay, so this is going to give me 1 half over 2, which gives me 1 fourth. Okay, so that's going to be 1 fourth. Now let's look at the midpoint between zero, uh, negative 1 fourth and 1 fourth. Notice that that guy's really easy, it's just going to be 0. But you can do the math if you want. And then the last one will be from 1 fourth to 3 fourths. So 1 fourth plus 3 fourths divided by 2. That's going to give me 4 over 4 divided by 2, which gives me 1 half. So this middle part will be 1 half. So this, the y-axis will be around here then. It's going to be right there. Okay. So the cosine curve, so first the cosine curve is going to look very, um, it's going to look like this. So here's negative 1 and 1. So the current sine curve starts as 1, then 0, negative 1, 0, and then 1. So it kind of looks like this. Okay. So now what we got to do is multiply everything by negative 4. Now this negative, remember what it's going to do, is going to shift it. It's going to reflect it. Okay. So all of my points are the same. Negative 1 fourth, 0. 1 fourth, 1 half, and then 3 fourths. But now everything is going to be at a factor of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So now this guy's going to be at 4, then 0, negative 4, 0, and then 1. But it's going to be reflected. Oops, I'm already messing this up. Oh, God. Okay. So. Okay, I really messed this up. Okay, because now we got to flip it because it's at neg F positive 4. So now it's at negative 4. Then it's 0. Then it's 4, 0, and then negative 4 fourths. So basically now you kind of have like an upside down smiley face instead of a, a happy face. Okay. So now this is what the cosine curve looks like. This is the cur curve that I, we just graphed. Okay. So what is the domain? So the domain in this case will be negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range would be from negative 1, oh no, from negative 4 to 4. That would be it. Okay, now let's do one more problem. That involves also a vertical shift. So let's do part C. Okay, so let's say we had f of x is equal to 7, uh, let's do sine of 3x minus pi over 2 uh, plus 
two. Uh, let's do minus two. Okay, so we got everything in here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to work from the inside out. Okay, so let's start off with the inside, so the phase shift. So we want, remember that a sine curve is going to be from zero to two pi in one cycle. Okay, so we're going to plug this guy inside. and It's going to do everything for us. It's going to shift it over two pi units. And then it's going to multiply all the x values by three. So, um, or by one third. So I'm going to start off by adding pi over two to all sides. So this is going to be pi over two. 3x. So now the 0, now I'm going to pi over 2. The 2 pi, when I add pi over 2, what is that going to give me? I'm going to add pi over 2, and I'm going to get 5 pi over 2. And now finally, we're going to divide by a 3. So now all my x values are now going to be compressed. So you're going to get pi over 6 here, and you're going to get 5 pi over 6. So this is basically where my new period is going to be at after I shift it and multiply everything by a factor of one third. Okay, so now we have the graph. It's now going to be at pi over six, starting there and ending at five pi over six, not at zero anymore. Okay, now let's find the midpoints. So the midpoint between this guy and this guy. So we're going to have pi over six plus five pi over six divided by two. So the top part is just going to be 6 pi over 6, which is pi, and then the bottom one is just a 2. So the midpoint here is going to be pi over 2. Now we're going to take pi over 6 and pi over 2. So pi over 6 plus pi over 2 divided by 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add this. So pi over 6 plus pi over 2 divided by 2. It's going to give me pi over 3. So this guy right here is going to be pi over 3. And then we're going to do the last two, pi over 2 and 5 pi over 6. Pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 6 divided by 2. Okay, so pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 6 divided by 2. It's going to give me 2 pi over 3. Okay, so usually this is the harder part. Um, I don't know why this is very difficult, but it is for many of you guys. But uh, hopefully if you understand this, then you should be pretty good. Okay, so that takes care of the inside. Now let's do, let's kill two birds with one stone. What is a seven doing? So the seven is basically multiplying the entire thing by a factor of seven. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now starting at pi over six, because that's where it's gonna start, Remember, the sine curve starts at 0. Then it goes up to 7, then 0, negative 7, 0. So the sine curve right now looks like that. All right, and now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to shift it two units down. Okay? So everything is going to move downward now. Okay, so I'm going to draw a new graph. I like this. So here's pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the first one was at zero. It's going to be shifted down two, so it's going to be a negative two. This guy was at seven, shifted down two, is now at five. This guy was at pi over two, this one, which was at zero, shifted down two, it will be a negative two. Two pi over three was at negative seven, now it's at negative nine. And now this guy was at, um, at zero, shifted down to, it's going to be here. So this graph kind of looks like this. Now this looks really bad because the, here they're more spread out than the other ones, but this is basically what the graph looks like. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, so that never changes. 
But now the range is different because notice that the lowest y value now is negative 9. So it starts at negative 9 and it ends at positive 5. Okay, so this is basically the sine and the cosine waves.